hope you're doing well. I want to begin with two items of, of good news. Can I do that? First item of good news is be glad you weren't in the first service. It was hot as blue blazes in there. But um, if some of you skinny people that are always cold, you should have been in that first service today. Because uh, I don't know, the air wasn't working or whatever. It was just hot and stuffy, and some of you would have loved it. The rest of you would have been fanning. So um, but anyway, that's the good news today. It's cool in here, and that's, that's awesome. Second good news, A.W. Tozer said one time, you've been forgiven, so act like it. And you say, well, Pastor, why is that good news? Because that was the last point of the message last week. And for a week, you have been riveted to your seats trying to figure out what A.W. Tozer said. And now you can relax. Because for some of you, that drove you crazy because I forgot to fill in that last blank. But now your life is complete. And you can have a good Sunday nap and you can enjoy life because you know that you have been forgiven. So act like it. Today we turn to a story in the Bible. We continue to walk through these seven sayings of Jesus, not really the seven, seven words of Jesus, but the seven sayings of Jesus. And we, we see one person that seeks God's forgiveness and acts like it, and then we see another person, uh, maybe not but so much so. We see another person in that same scene rejecting Christ and one person in that scene accepting Christ. And they were both a part of the same scene. They were both part of the same scenario. They were all there for the same purpose and the same reason. And you look in your Bibles in Luke chapter 23 and it says one of the criminals who hung there. Now Jesus had just remember they were ridiculing him. They were badgering him. They put a sign above and said king of the Jews and all this scene was unfolding, but then one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him and said, aren't you the Messiah? If so, save yourself. But the other criminal rebuked him, don't you fear God? Since you are under the same sentence, you punished, we are being punished justly for what we're getting for our dirt, deeds deserve, but this man did nothing wrong, has done nothing wrong. And then they said to Jesus, Jesus, or he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me, when you come into your kingdom, and Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Some people say, well, there's no way somebody on death row can accept Christ. Well, there is a way somebody can accept Christ on death row because that guy was on death row and he accepted Christ right before his death. And Jesus made the promise to him that today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, if we can just imagine this scene, right? The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth is there in the center cross. And there's two criminals there. Same scene, same scenario, same situation, both there because being executed, being done away with because of the crimes that was in their life. And in that same setting, one is talking to the other. One talks to Jesus, right? And said, why don't you save yourself? And he begins to ridicule him. And you just, you just wonder, you just, I mean, was, were they at a straight line or were they at an angle of one another? We, you know, in the pictures, they were at an angle, but I, I really don't know where they were, how, how they were situated and that kind of thing. But one criminal looks at the other one and says, dude, don't, I mean, we're not getting down from, and this is the buddy champion paraphrase, okay? They were talking in, in Greek or Latin, but the, the other one looks kind of past Jesus. If they were in this, in this little trio together, looks past Jesus and said, don't you know you're about to face God? I mean, what is the deal? And the, you just wonder, they're leaning back and forth, and Jesus is kind of doing the tennis match thing, you know, as, as they're going back and forth. And, and, and this, this scene is unfolding, and they're, they're kind of badgering one another, if you will, talking with Jesus, talking with one another. People around the crowds are making fun of Jesus for the time being, making fun of Jesus. And this same scene, same scenario, but in the middle of that, one found a relationship with Christ, the other rejected a relationship with Christ. And we think about our moms, we think about our dad, we think about our brothers, our sisters, we think about ourselves, our husbands, our wife, our children. Same home, same situation, same scenario. But in the middle of that, one says yes to Jesus and one says no to Jesus. And we say, well, if only God would have done this, if only God would do this, if only this wouldn't have happened in their life, if only this scenario would have been different, if only this would have unfolded in a different way, if only things would have, well, apparently not. 
There these criminals were hanging on the same scene, the same scenario, both guilty of what they've done, knew they were guilty of what they've done, and, and one accepted Christ and one hasn't. But today I just want us to take just a few minutes and could you, could I compare myself to a criminal? You said, I didn't really come to church to be compared to a criminal. But could we learn, learn from them? Because when we leave today, you're going to be on one side of the cross or the other. There's no middle ground. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, took care of that. He was a sacrifice for our sins. But every one of us online and every one of us in this room are going to be on one side of the cross. You say, well, if my scenario were different, I would, oh, if I could have these, these questions answered, then I would, but probably not. You've just got to decide on what side of the cross you're going to land on today. So let's learn some things from the criminal because the criminal knew a couple of things in his life. The criminal recognized, recognized a couple of things in life. One of the things he recognized is that he was going to face God. The criminal recognized that he was going to face God. Apparently the other one hadn't come to terms with that or didn't care about that, didn't believe that was going to happen, didn't think that was going to happen, didn't, was so mad in his crime and in his hatred in his life, didn't, didn't really connect the dots in that. But the other criminal says, dude, leaning around Jesus, perhaps, looking past Jesus for sure and saying, don't, don't you know? I mean, we're not getting off this cross. I mean, like we're here and we're here till we die. We know how this works. We've, it's part of our culture. And don't you know that we're about to face God? Don't, don't, you, don't you recognize that, that, that we're, don't you fear God? Don't you fear what's about to unfold here? We are under, we're, we're all here under the same sentence, he said. Don't you know that we're going to face, in, in fact, Hebrews says, just as is a man destined to die once, and after that, face the judgment. Let's read that out loud together just for the fun of it. You want to? Let's read that together just so we get the, the, the main point of it. Let's read it together. Just as a man is destined to die once, and after that, to face the judgment. You're going to die once in your life. You may die twice, spiritually and physically, physically and spiritually. But it's destined that a man is going to die once. It's destined you're going to pay taxes as well. But it's destined that a man is going to die once. And after you die that one death, every one of us are going to face judgment. And that's what the criminal realized. The criminal realized, don't you know that we're about to face God? Don't you know that all of this is about to come home? And could we learn from... Could we learn from the criminal? Do you know? Do I realize that one day I'm going to face God? That I'm going to face God and give an account of my life? And this criminal realized that he was going to face God, but he also knew that he had sinned. He also knew that he had sinned in his life. In Luke chapter 23, the very next verse, he says, we're, we're, we're punished justly. We're here justly, and for, for, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. We're being here. We're here because we're sinned. You know that you've sinned. I know that I've sinned. And I wonder if they were part of the same sin. I wonder if they did whatever sin that went on. Maybe they held up the bank together. Maybe whatever sin, they, maybe they were together, and they could look at each other like, yeah, we were there. But I don't know. I don't know, but it, we, now listen, you go to the prisons today, and uh, whether I'm told or to watch documentaries and that kind of thing, you go to prison today, there's very, very few guilty people in prison today. They're there because of, they've been accused and they've been convicted of a crime, but often they say, no, I didn't do that. So I'm going to go to their death saying, I didn't do that. But these two criminals realized what they had done. They, and it's just plain and simple. We're punished justly. We're here because we deserve it. And we, we have sinned. Ecclesiastes says there is not a righteous man on earth. That encourages you, doesn't it? There's not a righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sins. Sometimes I'll talk to children and I'll say, have you ever sinned? They'll say they want a relationship with Christ. You know, have you ever sinned? Mm -mm. I've never sinned. You've never sinned? No, I've never sinned. Like mom and dad sitting right there, you know. I said, well, well, if mom and dad were with me, I don't think I'd say that either. But then they come to a point in their life that, yeah, I've sinned. I've done some things that had not pleased God. That criminal said, listen, we, we've been punished justly. 
Ecclesiastes, there is not a righteous man on earth who does not do what is, uh, who does always what is right and is without sin, never sins. Every one of us. And all of God's people said, amen. This morning I was going to church and I thought, you know what, real soon we're going to get things ramped back up and we're going to be meeting together. And we're going to have a real end gathering of bringing the fellowship back together. Hope you're part of that. Hope you're part of small groups. If you need a small group, call Jamie. We'll get you, we'll find you one in any of the three hours. Everybody needs to be a part of a small group. But when we all get back together and all that's over, I'm just going to issue an apology. I'm going to apologize to everybody because we canceled small groups. We didn't meet. And then I'm going to apologize to everybody because we didn't cancel small groups and we continue to meet. I'm going to cancel, I'm going to apologize to people that, because we didn't mandate masks. It make you wear masks. I'm going to apologize to people that because we didn't mandate masks. Well, we should have. I'm going to apologize for people for not having church sometimes. I'm going to apologize for people for having church sometimes. I'm just going to issue a blanket apologies because everybody's mad about something that's gone on the last year. You realize that. I mean, it doesn't matter what you've done. It is not right, according to some. Why? Why is it? Because none of us are without sin. And you say, well, pastor, what should we have done? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Don't kid yourself. But you know, every one of us could offer a blank apology, couldn't we? Every one of us could say, you know what? Nah, there's not a righteous man on earth. There's just not, there's not a righteous man on earth that, that doesn't have sin. And Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death that every one of us has done. The wages of sin is death. And that criminal realized, you know what? He realized he had sinned, but he suddenly realized, and many at the cross were about to realize this, he suddenly realized that Jesus was not just another man on the cross. Jesus was more than that. Jesus was more than just a man. Now, we know he was, a, he, he was a, the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. We know he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We know that he was a promised Messiah. But one criminal in that same scenario was badgering Jesus and rejecting Jesus. In that same scene, another criminal said, hmm, this man is here and he has done nothing wrong. That's what he said. He's, he, he, he's done nothing wrong. But this man has done nothing wrong. I love that verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 24, 21. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, this is weird to me, in him, that, that one who knew no sin, in him we might become the righteousness of God. That you might become the righteousness of God. That you might come the, the, become the purity of God. That you might become the trophy of God. That you might become the representative of God. The righteousness of God in your life. Why? Because of what Christ had done. He who knew no sin had done nothing wrong. That we might in him not become a sinful person, not become separated from God, that we might become the righteousness of God. Why? Because of that blood that was sacrificed on the cross. Because of the cleansing that that provided. Because of the renewal, of that relationship that comes from the sacrifice of sin in our lives. Suddenly that criminal realized that. There's something different. He, he, he wasn't just a good teacher although he did a great job teaching. He wasn't just a good man, although he was. He wasn't just a prophet of God, although he was a prophet of God. He wasn't just a charismatic figure that a lot of people followed, although he was. Thousands of people followed him. Whenever he would teach, he would just crowds would gather around. But he realized something else. He was God. He was the Messiah. He was the sacrifice for us. And he knew that he had done nothing wrong, and yet he was there with them in that scene. I wonder if you've realized that. I wonder if I've realized that. I wonder if we realize what the criminal realized that only grace could save him. That only God's grace could save him. You know, the Jesus, he's already said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
And then on one side, one criminal is condemning him, ridiculing him. On the other side, the criminal is responding to that other criminal. I wonder if Jesus is doing the tennis thing again, back and forth, listening to him. But now the criminal looks at Jesus. And he, he asked him, he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. And I, I wonder if Jesus was just there. Was, was he doing was he just listening? I, I wonder if when that criminal said Jesus, I wonder if Jesus lifted his head and looked at him. Remember me. Jesus, there's no way I can get off this cross. Jesus, it's too late for me. There's no way I can correct my life. I've already messed it up. Jesus, would, Jesus, would you remember me? Because Jesus, without you, I'm, I'm in trouble because I'm about to face God. I fear that in my life. Jesus, would you remember me? Would you remember me? Because I, 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 need, I need your grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, it's for by grace that you're saved. When you put your faith in that, when, by grace you're saved through faith, it's not of yourselves. Listen, get over yourselves. Don't, don't, don't boast about that. Don't be arrogant, brag about that. Be arrogant about that. No, 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 no. It's useless. It's by grace that you're saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's, it's just a gift that God desires to give you. Not of works so that no man can boast. Not of works. It's by God's grace. God, Jesus, would you remember me? I want that grace. Comes a point in every man's life that we need to say that. This criminal knew that Jesus would save him if you ask him. He had to have faith in that. That Jesus would save him. In fact, he said, Jesus, remember me. When, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Acts chapter 16 says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. So this morning, what side of the cross are you on? If you're watching online this morning, what side of the cross are you on? Are you one criminal that continues to question Jesus? Are you one sinner that continues to badger at Jesus and say, you know what, I would, I would be a Christian if it weren't for other Christians. I would be a Christian, but there's too many hypocrites in church. And you know, I'll remind you, one, one more isn't going to hurt us. Come on and join us. I would be a Christian, but I've, I don't understand why this happened in my life. I don't understand why that happened in the Bible. I don't understand how this unfolded in the Bible. I would be a Christian, but you know what, Jesus, I, I'm, I can't. It's by grace that you're saved through faith. Would you be like another criminal that says, you know what? Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? I have questions. I have things I don't understand. I have bad things that have happened to me in my life. Man, I'm going to face God one day. I need somebody to help me face God. Jesus, would you remember me? Many of you, have, you, you you've acknowledged that in your life. You've come to that point in your life. But some rightly or wrongly or whatever, you're still questioning that, and that's okay. But one day you've got to decide what side of the cross you're going to be on, and one day it's going to be too late for you. I just ask you, what side of the cross are you on? You see, there's some questions you'll never understand until you come to Christ. The Spirit of God comes in you as a follower of Christ. The Bible teaches us and it reveals things to us. We talked about that Wednesday night. Reveals things to us, things that you will not understand apart from Christ. Now, in Christ, there'll still be things you don't understand. Amen? There'll still be questions you don't have. There'll still be things you don't like about life. But you got God's grace in your life. I just ask you, what side of the cross are you on? And you say, well, if my, if my situation would change and my scenario would change, no, 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 it won't. There's two men in the same situation, the same scenario, and one said yes to Jesus and one said no to Jesus. Just did. It's just how it worked. So we've got to ask ourselves, what are, what are we going to do with this story? The good news is, as we close this morning, I mean, it's not like I'm fixing to give you the last blank. We've got four other blanks, but we're, 
we're coming in for the final approach, okay? I don't want to give you hope like, whoo we're almost done. We've got about five, six minutes, okay? Jesus said, responded. I mean, did Jesus look up at him? I, I don't know. He responded, I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise. What the other, what the other criminal do? When, he, when Jesus looked at him and said, today you'll be with me, not you. No, he did But today you'll be with me in paradise. I, don't you think the other criminal would say, hey, what about me? No, no, he didn't. He looked at that one criminal and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Today, because why? Because salvation is immediate. Salvation is immediate in our life. Jesus said, you confess your sins, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Not now. I mean, not later. Not yesterday. Today, I'll forgive you of your sins and I'll cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness because salvation is immediate in your life. You can have Jesus in your life today. You don't have to wonder about that and wait on that. Because Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise because salvation is certain. Salvation is certain. Today you will. You can trust me. You can bank on it. Especially Jesus said, I'm fixing to take on the sins of the world. I mean, like, theologically, there's some crazy stuff fixing to happen, and I'm about to make it happen. So today you'll be with me. You can bank on it. I can promise him that. You will be with me. Because salvation, salvation is immediate, but salvation is, is certain. But salvation is also a relationship. See, the Bible says to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. And as soon as we give up this life here on earth, immediately you're, you're in heaven. The Bible doesn't teach about this, this holding pattern of purgatory. It's not in the Bible. Sometimes mankind believes that and teaches that. But the Bible says today you'll, Jesus said today you'll be, and he said you're not going to hover around for a while. You're not going to pay the price for your sin and then you'll get to heaven. No, the Bible says today you'll be with me in paradise. But, but relationship is, is, is that, that salvation is immediate, it's certain, but it, salvation is also a relationship that we'll be with him. And that'll be an awesome thing. We'll be with him. Now, gee, we know that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, but we'll be with him. But guess what? We'll be with one another as well. And see, that's why it's so important that you love people in the church, because if you don't love other brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to live next door to them in eternity forever and ever and ever. It's just the way it works. I made that part up. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> but we're going to be with one another. Your mom, your dad, your baby, your brother, your sister. You're going to be with one another forever and ever. And God loves us so much that he provided that place for us. There wouldn't be any of this. And this isn't all there is. That in Christ we'll be with one another forever and ever and ever. And the Bible says that you will know even if you'll be fully known. We'll know things in heaven we don't know here, we don't understand here, but we will know one another. Go to the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus was there. Remember? With Pete, Jimmy, and Johnny? Remember that? And there were Moses and Elijah there talking about Jesus' return, Luke tells us. Incredible relationship. We'll know one another. We'll have relationships in heaven. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me. Be with other people in paradise. Because salvation is forever. If you will, damnation is forever as well. Complete separation from anything, any resemblance, any presence of God. Forever and ever and ever. Heaven. Paradise. Today you'll be with me in paradise. As we're here today, some 220 miles above us, going 17,000 miles an hour, are two astronauts outside the space station just floating around, taking things off, putting things on, tightening up clamps, just floating. I thought, wow, that'd be crazy. That'd be incredible. Girls asked me the other day, Daddy, if you could get on one of those civilian rockets and go to space, would you do that? I said, in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. I had no question asked. They said, well, what if you didn't make it? I just keep on going. <laughs> just, just go. To paradise, I don't know where paradise is. I don't know what paradise is for you. Is it the beach with the warmth and the salt air and your feet in sand? Is it the mountains? 
Is it floating 220 miles above us, 17,000 miles? I don't know. But Jesus says to that criminal, man, you'll be with me. You'll be with me forever and ever and ever. St. Corinthians says, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Today. You see, we really can relate to the criminal, can't we? Some of us in our life has come to that point in our life where we could look at Jesus in the eyes and say, Jesus, would you remember me? I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. Some of us are still questioning, still, if you will, ridiculing, badgering. There's no use in that. It's not useful to me in my life. I've got questions. I don't understand. This isn't fair. This isn't right. And you may be right in that statement. It's not fair. It's not right. But that's why God the Father provided God the Son. That's why he provided heaven for us, because he loves us that much. That there will be a day where there is no more goodbyes. There is no more sorrow. It's, it's gone. It's taken care of. But you've got to decide what you do with what Christ has provided for us. Very same situation, very same scenario. One said yes, another said no. So what about you? What will be your decision? And you say, well, I've made that decision in my life. I've, I've prayed and Christ has forgiven me. I've received his grace. Well, you've been forgiven, A.W. Tozer said. Why don't you act like it? Why don't you act like it in your life? Accept his forgiveness. Live like it. But why don't you say yes to him today? Rick Warren said, through salvation, our past has been forgiven. Our present is given meaning, and our future is secured. That's available to every one of us today in our lives. Let's pray together. It is available to the criminal. It's available to you. It's available to me right now in this room, watching online, watching next week to say yes. Jesus, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? The Bible says that today that salvation is available to you. If you'll say yes, just in the quietness of your heart, will you just ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins? That you still have questions, you still have hurt in your life, you still have sorrow, but Wow, 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 you need Jesus. We just look at the throne of God today and say, will you remember me? And Jesus will say today, tomorrow, whenever that day occurs, you'll be with me in paradise. Acknowledge he's a Savior, ask him to be your Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Submit your life to him. You make that decision today, I want to encourage you to tell someone to your left, to your right, send them a text, an email. Walk down the aisle this morning and say, I've made that decision in my life. There'll be a team member here that'll pray with you. Prayer request here at the altar, just asking people to pray for them. They're struggling, having a hard time. Father, as we reflect on your word today, we pray. We ask that you would speak to us, that you would show us clearly what side of the cross we're on, that you would lead us in the way everlasting. Father, we submit our lives to you, pledge to be obedient to you, now and forevermore. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.